Okay, these questions are more complicated than tutorial sheets problem. Tutorial sheets problem are more complicated, aren't it? They are more complicated. Okay, we'll make a start. So, by the test that you had on Friday, average is about 56. So, and the median mark is also 56. So, that means if you have got, I think about 250 students took the test, or 255. So, 125th or 126 student, if you arrange the marks, uh, it will be within that category. So I'll, I'll quickly show you how you did that so that you can evaluate where you are in terms of the class. So, yeah, 267 students did it. 56 is the average and median is also 56. 22 students got between 90 and 100. So I'd say anybody up to this level is fine for the first test. Those who got less than 50, I think, need to go back and revisit the, uh, the tutorials and, and, and those in here. And in fact, what I mean is I just looked at the tutorial, first tutorial. These are the sort of problems that we had. And tutorial problems are much more difficult, and especially the in class one than what you got in the test. You don't agree with that, do you? These this, this are the sort of problems in the tutorial set. So please do solve the problem in the tutorial set. And each of the problem that you got in the test possibly would not be more difficult than the tutorial set's problem would be more difficult anyway. Uh, or at least it was in that case. So yeah, online test, time is an issue. Some, or, some of you said that. Yeah, I'll take care of the time for the next test so that you get uh, sufficiently more time to do the test. Uh, so that time aspect I'll take care for the next test. So the next test would be again in week seven, similar on Friday, week nine, week 11. So those three tests would be there. So Fridays in week seven, week nine, week 11. So if you, if you do not have that, I'll send you an email but if you want to make a note of that, so the next test would be 12th of November, then it would be 26th of November, then it would be 10th of December. Exactly on Friday in the tutorial hours and, and, and with the same, same setup. So, so I, I, I wanted to test the setup, so I think it worked well in terms of the setup. Was there any problem with the setup? With the, with, with the main lecture theater you taking on your device and those who didn't have went to the computer cluster? Was it an issue? No, okay. So we'll continue with, with that setup then in week seven, week nine, and week 11. And as I said, please go through the tutorial sheets problem. And if you, if you understand them, then you will not be having any problem should not be having any problem in those tests. And, and you could see that these tutorial sheets problem are much more difficult than what you have got in the test. You had only one load, and all the type of loads that you had, UDL, moment, point load, as well as the triangular load are all, all covered in here. So, so if, you, if you do those tutorial problems, then, uh, 
then it should not have any problem. I was expecting a little bit higher average, to be honest, um, but there you are, and I can understand that was a fast test, so that was the case, maybe. Okay, so we are going to go into a new topic, which is, and for this one, is a shear force and bending moment diagram, and the lecture notes are in here. I think it was uploaded last week. So that's the lecture notes, part 03, that I am showing it you now. And the tutorial sits for this one. There are two, which is available in this week's one. Tutorial 3, sketching bending moment and shear force diagram and calculation of bending moment shear force. So this would be doing it um, qualitatively without any number and the tutorial four would be with the number. So bending moment and shear force are extremely important for engineering applications of basic structural mechanics because these leads to uh, design. This is the first thing you would be checking for a beam type of object, what would be the bending moment diagram because this gives you, it's called bending stress. So if I show you what I mean by that, so imagine you have got a beam like this, okay, let me show you that, okay, and I apply a moment to it, either I put it in this way or I can, I can put it in that way as well. Then what you could see if I bend this piece of foam, which is I'm using at a, as a beam, so if I, if I put some load, it will bend possibly in that way. So what you could see is difference from pulling and pushing type of force. Bending creates different type of deformation in the beam. So there are some lines drawn along this beam. So one along the center line or center plane and few perpendicular to it. So any of these lines represent, uh, if you take a slice, that would be the cross section. So if you take a slice, if you, if you make a slice there, that will expose the cross section of the beam. If you take another slice here, that would be the cross section of beam. In this case, it is rectangular cross section, okay? Now, see what difference does it make if I want to push it, pull it, or, and bend it. So if I want to push it, you will see, if consider two cross section, next to each other. So one purple and one say green maybe. So one purple cross section and one green cross section. So see what happens to them. If I, if I push them, then they come closer. The cross section comes closer, which you can expect. If I pull the beam sufficiently, then they will, they will, ex they will go apart to each other. But if I bend them, then what sort of things you are, you are saying in here? Yeah, go on. Yeah, so, but these lines are remain straight. The, the cross section does not bend, but what cross sections remain straight, but you are absolutely right, part of it is coming closer and part of it is going apart. Concentrate the line in the middle, line at the top, and line at the bottom. So if I bend it, line at the top is coming closer. So there must be some pushing force going into that end. Line at the bottom is going apart. So there must be some pulling type of force going along. Concentrate in the middle, virtually the same if you think of the line that does not change much. So there is nothing that happens along the middle plane. If you bend it in this way, then the top part comes closer to each other, so compressive force or push type of force, and bottom side will have tensile type of force. Now, of course, if you bend in the other way, the reverse thing would happen. So the top part will try to go apart or pull type of force, bottom part would be push type of force and middle would remain virtually the same. 
So the bending creates both type of deformations into the beam, push type as well as the pull type. So the stress that will be generated in the beam would be, would be different type the way in which, so for the time being, let's say we keep our discussion on I'm bending it in this way. So the top part is pushing and bottom part is pulling or, or, or tension. So if I, if, I, if I bend it in this fashion, so the top is compression, bottom is tension and middle is zero. So few things you can, we can, without doing any calculations, we can hypothesize that along the middle, the, the stress would be zero along the middle plane because I don't see any visible deformation, either elongation or compression or contraction. Along the top, yes, compression. Along the bottom, tension. And, and, and also, it is more as we go towards the top from the center. So, so look at it again. If I, bend, if I bend it like this way, so as you go from the center towards the top, it is coming much, much closer to each other. So the compression or the pushing type of force must be increasing as we are going up. In this case, yes. If the material is same, it is exactly the same. And it, it depends on exactly how far it is extending and, and compressing. So so if, if this distance is, say, let me, let me. So if, if this distance is, say, let's say, uh, five centimeter apart, for example, five and a half centimeter apart, for example, and then if you if you squeeze it, and then that becomes three at the top, so two centimeter increased, then two centimeter uh, decreased, two centimeter will increase at the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it will increase, the stresses will increase uh, as you go from the center towards the top or the bottom. So that is another aspect we could clearly see by bending this foam. Other thing is the stresses that would be generated in here is acting in this direction. We'll come to that again when we talk about the stress. We are not talking about the stress now, but you could see the direction of the stress would be perpendicular to the cross-section line because in this direction, the forces are acting. So forces are acting in these directions because that's why it is getting compressed. So, the, so although it is bending in this manner, the, the stresses are acting in the direction of the length. And similarly, it is pulling apart in this direction. So the stresses are acting along the direction. So, so as a result, part of the beam extends, part of the beam compresses, and that creates bending. Now, why it is important? Now, of course, beam are very common, as you have seen, or, or idealization of the structure as a beam, starting from a part of a bridge to the wing of an aircraft, for example, blades of a helicopter, for example. Even the whole fuselage for a fast uh, idealization could be taken as a, as, as a big beam, for example. So, so that's a sort of idealization why beam is very, very common. And beam resist load or transfers load by bending primarily. So we need to know that mechanism. We need to understand that mechanism well so that if given a load, we can find out how much it is bending, by which how much I mean is how much stress that is creating within my beam so that I can compare it with my material strength property that I probably have done in the lab. So if I bend of this foam, I, if I know the properties of this foam, how much stress that it can withstand, then I would load up to that point or below that with a factor of safety. So this is important to know that. So the first step is to find out something called bending moment, which is different than moment. Moment is force times the distance, perpendicular distance to the line of action of the force. Bending moment is 
actually the internal forces that would be generated within this beam if you apply a load. So if you apply a load in this beam, supported on these two end, it will bend. So what it means is that, as I have said before, that the top part is under compression type and bottom part is under tension. So this creates a moment within the cross section. So if I take one cross section here, and if I bend it in this manner, then top part is compressive type of force. So let's say the force direction is this. Top part is compression. And bottom part is under tension. So let's say this is, this is, this is the tension side in this case. So, so this side, the force is going in this direction and this side is force is going in that direction because that's what I mean by compression and tension. Now look at these two forces. This is creating a moment. So at any location, this compression and tensile force will create a moment locally at each of these cross-section points. And this is internal forces, internal stress resultant. And this is called bending moment. Now we, we can appreciate possibly, although not uh, directly get it, that this uh, magnitude of this moment that we are generating will depend on the load we apply and how does it bend as well. So for example, if I do it in this way, we could see the bending is much more pronounced here as opposed to if I take another two cross section, let's say here, for example. And if I, if I bend it the way I am doing, so maybe you could say the bending is much more towards the middle two than the, than the other two on the side, for example. So the way I'm bending, it may be that the bending moment or the stresses that will generate will vary along the length of the beam. A diagram of bending moment is to show, is to plot the bending moment along the length of the beam. So you say, okay, at this location, I have got this much of bending moment. At this location, I've got this much of bending moment due to the load. So that means that the, that, that will beam would bend locally due to that much of bending moment, for example and here probably would be less. So the diagram of bending moment is exactly drawing this amount of bending moment at different location along the length of the beam. Okay, let's go back to how we do that. And believe it or not, it's, it's, it's no different than our uh, doing, uh, dealing with equilibrium. So equilibrium is something that we have to consider again and again. So let me focus on bit of a beam. So let's say we have got a beam here of 10 meter length. Can you see it here? Yeah. 10 meter length and which is loaded by a, f a, by a uniformly distributed load of 2 kilonewton per meter. So if it is 2 kilonewton per meter, now of course the total load would be 20 kilonewton. So each of these reaction force support would take half of that load. So that is 10 kilonewton. So 2 kilonewton per meter means total load would be 20 kilonewton. So that is 2 times 10. So half of that load would go into one of the support, so that is 10 kilonewton. Now, we want to see how the bending moment vary along the length of the beam. Now, although I just told you bending moment is the internal force resistance, <coughs> but for the sake of equilibrium, that would be at any location equal to the moment that is required at that uh, location to resist the whole load. So how do we find out that bending moment? Now, let's say we want to find out what is the bending moment at a distance x from the left-hand side. So you take a distance x from the left-hand side, say maybe somewhat here, and then as to, uh, with the other cases of the truss, to find out what is the bending moment at that location, we need to make a virtual cut. So what I'm saying is, so if we need to find out bending moment at that location, we pro pro probably need to take a virtual cut 
at this location. And then, of course, it is loaded at the top, and it, is, it has got a support at one end and loaded at the top. So, what if we make a cut here, then we'll, if we consider equilibrium of this side, now if anything, any force and moment that is required from the right hand side to keep this part in equilibrium, that force must be acting at this interface. Or in other words, if I go back to my drawing, so if I make a cut at a location X, and if I consider what is the equilibrium of, so I make a cut at a distance X, like this. Now I check what is the equilibrium, whether this part is under equilibrium or not. And as with any, any structural analysis, we have seen that if a whole structure in, is in equilibrium, each and every part of it is in equilibrium. So if I made a virtual cut at a distance X, why do we use a distance X, not one meter, two meter? We could, but X makes it much more general. So if I find out an expression of this bending moment shear force with respect to X, then I could put the values of X as I am like. So X could be zero, X could be two, four, five. So that's just putting it in the algebraic form. Now, of course, one could do it, find out, uh, you can take a cart at one meter, two meter, three meter, etc. you can do that as well. But doing it in terms of X makes it more general so that you can come up with an algebraic equation which you can use to show the variation of these quantities. Okay, so question is, I made a cut with a piece of scissor and you have to see whether this is in equilibrium or not, okay? So do you think this is in equilibrium? We don't know. We have got, we have got what are the qu questions? We have got the summation of vertical force. So if we do summation of vertical force zero, Thank you for reminding me. If we do summation of vertical forces zero, then we could clearly see that the downward force is 2x and the upward force is 10 in this case. So maybe if there is no force acting at the interface, that means one side does not support to the other, then of course there will be nothing at the interface. But as soon as you have the cut, then maybe you have exposed the interface. So let's say there is a force acting in here as V vertical and a moment, because these two are the interface force that you need for a standard beam for bending. So, so if you do the equilibrium in this case, so 10 kilonewton is going up, so that is 10 and then 2 times x is going down, so minus 2 times x, and v is going up, so plus v, that should be equal to 0. So summation of vertical forces 0 will give you this equation, or, or v at a distance x, if you say. So you could say that v at x would be twice x minus 10. So the interface force which acts parallel to the cross-section is this quantity, okay? So how does it look like? So if you draw that, if you plot, if you vary, if you vary x, so if you put x equal to zero, so for x equal to zero, vx would be equal to minus 10. So for x equal to 0, which is, so you plot a line from 0 to 10 meter, for x equal to 0, that is minus 10 kilonewton. <coughs> then you put x equal to 1, then Vx would be equal to 2 minus 10, so that is minus 8 kilonewton. Then you put sometimes, say, x equal to 5, which is the middle, then Vx would be equal to 0. Similarly, if you go the other end, x equal to 10 meter, the distance, then that would give you Vx equal to plus 10 kilonewton. 
So it's an equation of a straight line, and you could see that, or if it is something else, then you could draw that. So this shows diagram is called shear force diagram, or in short, SFD, shear force diagram. What does it show? That if you have got a beam of 10 meter length, and it is loaded in this way, then at each point along the length, you have got an interface force acting of this much amount. An interface force means that if you, if you imagine you are on the left hand side of that interface or the right hand side of the interface, each side resist each other by that much of force. It's like a searing force. It's like cutting force, for example. So the cutting force that is, it is acting in that, at that place is, is, is a given by that expression. Now, given that, is that under equilibrium? Possibly not. Possibly not for moment. So we need to check for moment expression. Now, so that we need to do. So summation of moment about any point is equal to zero. So you will do that now. So if you take moment about this point, for example, here. So moment about this point would give you, say, 10 times so this moment is a clockwise moment, first of all, is acting at that point, so I start with that M. Then you have got moment due to 10, same direction, so M plus 10 times X. Again, moment due to force is force times the distance. So force times the distance is 10 times X, and this is a moment there already, so that would be M value there. And then, of course, this 2 kilonewton force is there, so the total value of that force is 2x, and it will be acting from this point is somewhere in the middle, over here. So this is the force 2 times x, the total force, if you sum it up, so that would be the total force 2 times x, and it will act at half of the distance, which is x over 2. So twice x times x over 2, and it is in a about this point, it will go in an anti-clockwise way. So we'll put it as with a negative sign. These are the three forces, force one, force two, which is the summation of this distributor load, and a moment. Force due to V would be zero, because we are taking moment about that point. So moment about, let's say, about point O, o or axis O, o is equal to so that gives you this equation. So M is equal to, or M at a distance X, uh, I give a X subscript, is equal to, I take that to the other side. So 2, 2 would get cancelled. So that would be X square minus 10X. So exactly now the same way as the CR force, you draw a diagram in here. So you put X equal to 0, so moment is 0. So put x equal to 0 meter, moment is 0 in here. Put x equal to 1 meter, m would be 1 minus 10, so minus 9 kilonewton meter. So in this way, you go x equal to 5 meter, so that would be 25 minus 50, so that is minus 25 kilonewton etc. And again, if you put x equal to 10 meter, m would still come to as 0. So this curve would be a second degree parabolic curve in this way. What does it show? It shows exactly the moment at each location along the length. So if you over the support, there would be a searing type of force would be acting over the support of 10 kilonewton, but no moment, so no bending. So if you put a load uh, of a simply supported beam loaded 2 kilonewton per meter, there is no moment, bending moment, at the right-hand side and the left-hand side over the support. But there would be a searing type of force, which is coming from these reaction forces. So, and, and it's at any location, then you need to find out what would be the moment. Now, how does it help in the design? Now, of course, we can see bending moment is maximum in this location. So that is the 
maximum bending moment. So I can take a note of this, and this is 25 kilonewton meter. So I can find out what would be the stress due to that maximum bending moment, and I'll make sure that my central span can take that amount of bending stress. Similarly, I can find out what is the maximum shear force. So maximum shear force is here or here. I can find out what is the stress due to shear force. There are two different type of force. One is acting along the shear force acting along the cross section, and bending is acting in the perpendicular direction. You remember that bending creates the push and pull type along the length of the beam direction. So we can find those stresses and make sure that those two sides and over the support can take that much of shear force. And that will probably be not enough because these are the two extreme cases, but we may need to consider somewhere in the middle. For example, here in this location, where you have got this much of shear force and this much of bending moment. And they are two different directions. So shear force acts along the, uh, along the cross-sectional direction and this perpendicular. So we have to somehow combine those stresses, which you will learn later in second year, and then compare that with the strength of the material that you are choosing. So, so this is what is called bending moment and shear force diagram. And how you do it? You, you consider the beam, draw the, find out the reaction force, and take an arbitrary cross section at a distance x, and then find out, then carry out, and imagine that whenever you have, wherever you have cut, there is a force interface acting at a shear force and bending moment, V and M. And then write down the equilibrium equation of summation of vertical forces zero, and summation of moment about an axis is zero. Then that will give you expression of the shear force and expression of bending moment. And then you draw that by varying the x value, and this is your bending moment and shear force diagram. So you can do it for any problem, any type of loadings. Now in this case, I've started with a simple problem because the load do not vary. Now if you had a point load here, then that would be different. So if you take a cross section, section on the left of the point load and right of the point load, that will be different. So we look at those sort of complexity as we go along. But for the time being, this is the process. Any questions on this? Did you get it? Can you show your hand, please, that you got it? Okay, good, thank you. I'm happy, because this is very difficult, okay? So getting conceptually is absolutely useful. Then I can build on to that and go to the, go to the other, other bit in there. And if in doubt, read the lecture notes. What I have said so far is exactly, I'm, I'm in a way repeating that with this sponge foam in here. I, I'll try to get you a piece of foam like this. So I'll try to see if I can order some 250 foam. This is a really, really useful thing. And if you mark it, it's really good. Or, or if, you, if you have got a sort of a large kitchen, sort of a dish uh, uh, washing foam, try with that as well. Because foam is good, you can bend it very easily and you can see the deformation. So anything bigger piece of foam that you have in, in your kitchen or somewhere, then try to use that. Okay, so next thing what I'm going to show you is how we can do this sort of calculations without, uh, this sort of diagram, without doing any formal calculations, okay? So if we know, so my, my, my way of doing that would be, if we know how the load varies, can we know how the CR force would vary? Can we know then how the bending moment will, will vary in, in a beam like this? So that, that would be my next step for you to. So before I do that, I'll, I'll just show some sign convention that we'll be using. Because we are talking about bending and shear in here, and always talking about a virtual cut, so there is a left side and the right side of the cross section. 
So if one side gives a force on the upward direction, you would expect the right hand side to have the left hand side, etc. So to, to uh, simplify the matter, we'll use this sign convention. If it is a direct force, push or pull type, pull type force is positive. So if you have got an element like this, so pull type force is positive force. So this is positive force. If you have got a bending, then if you bend in such a way that the top part extends and bottom part contracts, then that's a positive bending moment. So this is positive bending moment. And for shear, if we take a section here, for example, so if you consider a section there, for example, if the load is such that the left hand side goes down, or left hand side has a negative shear force going down, and right hand side shear force goes up of a cross section, then that's a positive shear force. Now, you may be uh, tempted to find out that exactly that type of sign convention we used. So if you can, so you can see here that I have made a cut at that point. So I'm talking about the right hand side of the cross section. So right hand side of the cross section, I assume positive shear force is going up. So that is my positive shear force. Right hand side of the cross section moment going in the clockwise fashion is positive. So that's what I have considered in here. If we are in this problem, if we are considering the other side, for example, so other side of the loading like this, so I'm not using the left hand side, so this is, this distance is 10 minus x, for example, 10 minus x meter in this side, then I would have used here the shear force would be coming that direction. So I would use shear force as V because that is the left of the cross section. And moment, I would have considered this is a moment. Okay? So that just being so that this moment is the opposite direction to this moment because these two are the interforce. So this moment must be equal and opposite to that moment. This shear force must be equal and opposite to that shear force. So left hand side of the cross section and the right of side of the cross section, we have to make sure that the forces are similarly as in this case. So if you consider this is intention, force would go from left to right. Whereas if you consider this side, force would go from right to left. So they are consistent. So if you consider a pull force, then they should pull in the two opposite direction, not both in the same direction, in the left and right hand side of, an, of, a, of a segment or an element there. So exactly the same logic here. So if you've got a bending, you need to, so for example, if I'm going to bend it in this way, I need to bend it in this direction on, with my right hand and the other opposite direction with my left hand. So then only it will bend in this way. So that's exactly we we have to apply it in here. Yeah? So so if you pull both of them from each other, what's that? A positive shear? This one? Yeah. This one is not a shear. This is the positive pull, positive tension. Oh, tension. Yeah. So this is like like in a member of a truss or something. So this is a positive tension. So positive force is is a, this is intense. Okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So with that sign convention, then we'll go, uh, we, we, could, we could look at few other examples. Again, you can read it through. It's, it's exactly the similar way. But what I'm going to do is, without doing these calculations, whether we can draw this diagram qualitatively, it's the shape of the diagram, that this should, uh, CR force diagram would look like. This would be how a bending moment diagram would look like. So can we find out that? And this is, so I'm going to skip a few bits here on the notes and going to the last page of, of this set of notes. So which is, what is the relationship 
between the load that you apply on a beam to the shear force and the bending moment. So this is what I am going to going to concentrate now. And then you will see that if you if you if we can have an uh, relationship established, then drawing those diagram would be easy. So let's look at that. So imagine you have got a piece of beam and it is loaded by an arbitrary load W for, for some length. And the load could vary, for example, not uniform, but it could be triangular or some weird shape like that as so. Now, of course, if it is not uniform, we cannot deal with that for the whole length. We have to consider a very small length, that's the knowledge from calculus, dx, which would give us the load is uniform over that length. Let's say that bit is W over this little bit over here. So, and then I make it bigger. So, this is the infinite symbol, very small length. So, infinite symbol, which is very small length, is dx. And you have got a load W per unit length, W per unit length. So that means if W times dx would be the total load, which means the total load over this part is W times dx. So W per unit length over the length of dx, W times dx would be the work done, or, or, or will be the load. Now, we'll make two cuts along at the left one, along at the right, and separate it out. Now, if I do that, make a cut, we have to assume that there is a possibility of shear force and bending moment in there. And we'll use the sign convention that we have used before. So, we have just introduced before. So, these are the sign convention. So, the first sign convention for the shear is we'll assume that left-hand side of the cross-section shear goes down and right-hand side shear goes up. Now, and the moment is in this manner. So the left-hand side goes anti-clockwise, right-hand side goes clockwise. So the moment is such that if you bend a beam, it would be like bend upwards. So you'll put a clockwise moment on the right-hand side and anti-clockwise moment on the left-hand side so that it moves up, so in that way. Now, different books would use different sign convention, and a mixture of those. So, I have used this one for various reasons. I'll come to that, I'll give you the reasons later, but be careful that this sign convention is not uniformly accepted. These are, there are all sorts of variations. If you pick up randomly two books, you will definitely get two different sign conventions, okay? <coughs> so, people just mix and match, and that creates many cases, confusion. So, to avoid that confusion, I have tried to uh, keep it in this way. The con it's a sign convention that I have chosen. It would m give us positive uh, results, uh, positive uh, quantities as we go along. Okay, let me explain that. Okay, so so left side is say let's say CR force V, and the moment is M, and the, on the right hand side let's say the interface CR force increases by little amount, say V plus dV, as opposed to V from left hand side. And the interface moment increases from m to m plus dm. So now we will consider the equilibrium of this small element. And then that will give me a relationship between the load, between the shear force and the bending moment. So if we consider the vertical equilibrium force. So the vertical equilibrium force V is going down, so I kept a minus V in this case. So, can you see it now? There? Yeah. So, I gave minus V from there. Load here, W dx is the total going down, so minus W dx, and V plus dV is going up. So, I get an expression, if you simplify it, dV is W times dx. So, the change in the shear force is the load that is putting on to that segment, which makes sense. 
So this side up to here, I've got a shear force of V and you have put some extra load, W times dx. So my resistance on the other side from the, from the right hand part of the beam must be extra W dx time. Or in other words, if you just convert it into using calculus, dv dx is w. What does it mean? That means the slope of the shear force diagram is the load intensity. Let me go back to the first problem that we did. We did this problem here. Now, slope of this line, what we are saying, shear force diagram, is the load intensity. Is it true? Okay, what is the slope of this line? Slope of this line is, this is 10 over a distance of 5 meter. So the slope is, slope is 2 in this case. Now of course, so 10 over 5 is 2, which is the load intensity. So that works. So the slope of the, of the shear force diagram is, shear force is W. So the gradient of the shear force diagram is equal to the value of the load intensity. So that would help me in doing this diagram even without doing all this calculation. So I could say, okay, at this point CR force is minus 10 because left hand side going up and then I'll draw, because my load intensity is constant 2 kilonewton per meter, so I'll draw a line with a slope of 1 is to 2 and then that will give me this line and then of course that would get me it in there. So without doing in between calculation, this relationship is powerful enough to show me how I can draw this qualitatively, this diagram. So now delving a little bit deeper with the moment, I can take moment about this point. So moment would be V times dx plus due to this l l load plus that moment and this moment. So if you do this one and say minus m, because that this moment is anti-clockwise, minus m, m plus dm clockwise there, v times dx will create anti-clockwise, and then this load moment here, w dx times dx over. Now this last quantity is multiplied, multiplication of two small quantity dx, and dx could be arbitrarily small. So you could, dx could be 0 0.1 meter, or 0 0.01 meter, or 0 0.001 meter. Now if you square them, of 0 0.001, that would be point then 0.501. So that could be very, very small, different order of magnitude than other quantity. So you can ignore this last bit, and if you rearrange that, then you get dm dx is v. Or in other words, slope of the moment diagram is the shear force diagram. So go, go back here in this problem that we did. Slope of this moment diagram is initially here is minus 10, so that's the slope. And then slope should start to decrease because my shear force is decreasing. So slope would start to decrease. At the midpoint, shear force is zero. That means slope of my moment diagram should be zero. Similarly, at this point, the slope is, uh, the shear force is 10. So the slope here would be 10. So looking at this shear force diagram, I can then think about how my moment diagram would step up as well. So this qualitative way of doing things helps a lot. And in fact, people do it the other way around, but I have put the um, tutorial sets in this way. Tutorial sets three is doing this qualitative way of working. So, so third one, uh, the, uh, the problems are that you use these two expressions that the slope of the shear force diagram is the load intensity, and slope of the moment diagram is the shear force at any point. So we'll use that to deal with uh, these. Uh, so these are the, uh, the the questions on on here. So you'll be you should be able to work through that. Okay, so we'll, we'll so go through that and then we'll try to solve a few more problems on Thursday.
So dm dx is v. So what you are saying is the moment at any point. Yeah, you could you could do that. Yeah, but the point is. Point is in doing that. Of course, integration you need the initial value as well, because integration always works in terms of with, within the bounds. So that creates a problem. Whereas, yeah, it's it's fine. It's, you can do that. One could do that. Yeah. So, uh, this, so this applies only when it's UDL. Ah, uh, no. It will apply for any loading. We'll we'll do that on Thursday. Thank you. So it it will apply for any loading. Yeah. So W D X is the load. Load will act in this direction. If you take moment about this point, okay. So this load, this load is working in this direction. Okay. You are taking moment about this point. So which direction it will rotate? Okay. That is better. So, so that's all. For bending moment, we take a point. Yeah. 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 Yeah.